the University of Cincinnati, the nation's number two ranked basketball team with 26 wins and three losses on the year and a 21 game winning streak on the line against the nation's defending college basketball champions, the nation's number one rated basketball team, the Ohio State Buckeyes who have won 27 in a row this year, add five to that at the end of last year. They now have won 32 consecutive basketball games. So what could be better for a windup to the collegiate basketball season than to have the nation's number one and number two basketball teams meeting in the finals for the championship? A senior from Norwood, Ohio, Carl Bolden. And the coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats, Coach Ed Junker. All right, referee Phil Fox is ready for the tournament to get underway, and here we go. Ohio State's tip. Richie Hoyt has the ball. He leaves it for Mel Noah. Now let's see if Cincinnati is going to come out in a zone defense or a man-to-man. -man. They're in a man-to-man -man defense. Richie Hoyt takes an outside shot from 25 feet on the left. It's no good. Cincinnati's Paul Hogue rips off the rebound for the Bearcats. Passes it out to Carl Bolden. Mel Noel is going to be on Carl Bolden defensively man-to-man. -man. Havlicek is in his expected position against the tough Bob Wiesenon. One of the great individual battles this tournament should have. Now Hogue moves in there as the Bearcats take the ball outside. A screen set for Thacker along the baseline. He goes into the free throw lane area with Richie Hoyt all over him. Now back outside to Tony Yates into Paul Hogue. He's wheeling left. He holds up for a jump shot and it is banging on the rim. It won't go down for him. It's knocked out of bounds by Richie Hoyt of Ohio State. He watches his out of bounds play for him. He has to throw it all the way back out to Tom Thacker near the midcourt line. Thacker on the right of the floor. Let's go at 25 footer. It's no good. There's a whistle stopping play. The foul is on Richie Hoyt of University of Ohio State. Thacker's from Covington, Kentucky. One of the smallest forwards on a big college team in the country, probably. This one's no good. Scrambling for the rebound. Two men and is kicked out of bounds by Ohio State's Larry Siegfried for Cincinnati will take over. Thacker misses two straight free throws. Jerry Lucas on Paul Hogue down deep under the bucket in some good maneuvering there. Wiesenon goes to the baseline, has to go back outside with a pass to Tony Yates. Cincinnati playing a very conservative brand of ball so far, but it's early. Mel Noel on Tony Yates. Yates heading full speed to the corner, curls back under the basket. He's in for reverse layup. He scored. What a beauty. Tony Yates with a reverse left-handed layup. One of the tough shots in basketball. Took off on a circle, circled the free throw line area, then came down. Now here's a pass intended for... Jerry Lucas, it's intercepted by Hogue of, o of Cincinnati. Down the floor to Carl Bolden. Noel goes after him. Now to Thacker inside. A left-handed hooker by Hogue is no good. Noel up for the defensive rebound for the red-shirted Buckeyes from Ohio State. Noel now goes on a dribble up to the top of the circle for the Buckeyes. Inside. Jerry Lucas on a high screen takes the short pass or a block shot one and turns around and shoots it in. Jerry Lucas, who had 29 points last night and who is averaging 24.6 per game this year, ties the game at 2-2. Two two. Carl Bolden goes to the corner, wheezing on screens for him, then breaks off the screen and takes a return pass near the sideline. He's looking inside to Hogan. Instead, they go out to Thacker around the horn. Screen set for Wiesen out along the baseline. The hustling handle check deflects the ball. It goes back to Thacker of Cincinnati on the baseline. Archer their way out to Bolden. Bolden to Wiesen on. He's covered in a hurry by handle check. Boy, that handle check is quick. He's 6'5". He's rugged, and he has got good speed. He's a fine defensive player. Now Thacker for Cincinnati. Outside goes to the corner. He gets a screen from Hogue. Shoots it up and in. Tom Thacker sends Cincinnati into a 4-2 lead. Now Cincinnati's guards will put on a semi-court press, man-to-man. -man. They'll switch on their pressing defense. Ohio State's Larry Siegfried brings it up. It goes to Richie Hoyt to Mel Noel for 20-footer behind the circle. Good, there's a foul under the basket. The basket counts by Mel Noel, and there's a personal foul back under the boards. It's against Cincinnati's... Paul oh, Hogue, I believe. Hogue half-heartedly gets his hand up. It is on Hogue. How long can Hogue last on fouls? Jerry Lucas fires the free throw. He heads. Carl Bolin heads for the baseline. He puts up a shot, and there's a collision there. A charging foul against Bolin of Cincinnati. John Havlicek. The All-Big Ten forward shoots and hits. Tony Yates to Carl Bolin. Inside to Thacker on the high post. He puts up a jump shot from 15 feet. No good. Wiesen on rebounds and scores. Bob Wiesen on that good position under the boards. And this guy can really get up. He carries 215 pounds with him. 
And he's a good shooter in crowded territory around the backboard, too, which means a lot to a fine rebounder. It's all tied up at 6-6, six and six, Ohio State and Cincinnati. Richie Hoyt in the left-hand corner, takes a look at the bucket, decides not to shoot, feeds Lucas in close, out to Havlicek, back to Lucas underneath. It hardly touches his hands. He passes it back to Siegfried, who almost lost the ball. Now to Lucas, he shoots from 15 feet. He hits again. This guy is fantastic. Last night he shot 11 times in the semifinals and hit 10 from the field. Eight to six. Here's a foul on the front side. It's against Siegfried of Ohio State, fouling Carl Bolden. Larry Siegfried and his first foul of all game. Here's the shot corrected. He's at 79%. 79%. And he hits this one. Ball up the floor, barking out some kind of a signal. It gets into Lucas. He fakes one way, then fakes the other. Hogue doesn't go for the fake. He passes it out, then comes back in. They call steps on Lucas. Fred Taylor, the Ohio State coach, is up yelling at the official. He didn't like the call. Now Cincinnati comes down the floor with a chance to go into the lead. Wiesenon's got the ball. He hits for the bucket. He holds up, banks it off the board. Just no good. Rebounded by Larry Siegfried of Ohio State. Four on two fast break. Siegfried goes to the left-hand corner. Holds up to Hoyt. There's a long one by Hoyt. He hits. This Ohio State team this season has hit 49% of its shots, and they have now hit four in a row from the field in this string. 10 to 7 is the score. Last night they hit 63%. In the semifinal round, Wiesenon loses the ball on the floor, dives after it, and is able to tip it back outside to Tony Yates of Cincinnati. Now the Buckeyes on defense. Richie Hoyt moves out after Tom Thacker, and there's a whistle-stopping play, and we've got a foul. It's on Paul Hogue of Cincinnati for backing in. Hogue picks up his second personal foul. Hogue is a very slow mover back up the floor almost after every foul he commits. On offense, we watched him in the Midwest Regional over in Lawrence, and they almost had to hold up some free throws because of him. Now here's Jerry Lucas shooting the free throw, and the All-American sinks it. Many say this Ohio State team is the best college team ever assembled. They compare it with teams such as the 1956 and 57 teams of San Francisco. There's a shot by Thacker out of the corner for Cincinnati, and he bullseyes one home. 11-9, Thacker has four points. 14-38 to play in the first half. Cincinnati's pressing defense has not bothered Ohio State whatsoever. There's a pass to Lucas. He's hooking right. This one is softly laid up on the boards, but it's no good. And there's a foul call under the boards. It's on Bolden of Cincinnati. Bolden has two fouls. 10,700 people jam-packing Municipal Auditorium. Many people are sitting around the floor. Here's the shot. It's good by Mel Noah. Tony Yates brings the ball up the floor for Cincinnati to Tom Thacker, who's been a great sophomore. Underneath the bull, and he's got a shot. He's got a basket of fine play. Carl Bolin taking a feed from Tom Thacker, who has been the leading assist man on the Cincinnati ball club this year. While the Cincinnati guards running the two-man press, they get it into Lucas for Ohio State. A turnaround jumper from 20 feet. He makes this basketball look easy. He scores again. Eight points for Lucas. The game can't be that easy. 14 to 11. Ohio State is leading. Now Bolden being harassed by Mel Noel outside. We've got a charging foul on Bolden. Noel, as quick as a cat, got over in front. In position, and Bolden gets his third personal foul, and Cincinnati wants its first time out of the game. Some people were saying between games, well, it looks as though we saw the climax already, but I hardly believe so. I don't think so, Monty. You've got the two best teams in the country, so you know you're going to have a good ball game. We've got an interesting situation developing. You've got a great All-American, one of the greatest players ever to come out of college basketball, Jerry Lucas, and you've got Paul Hogue, a brilliant ball player in his own right, but prone to foul. He's already picked up two fouls. Now, what do you do with him? You have him guard Lucas close so he can't drive, but there you have the situation. He might pick up a foul. If he lays off like he's been doing, Lucas shoots over him and makes it look, as you said, very, very easy with that short jump shot. So Cincinnati calling timeout will try to figure now a new way to stop Lucas, and it'll be interesting to see whether they stay with Hogue on Lucas or switch Wiesenhahn over to pick him up. Wiesenhahn, I don't think, could stay with Lucas, but then who has been able to do this past two seasons? Well, no, go to the free throw line. He's had three points so far tonight. And he fires and hits for Ohio State. 15 to 11 now. Ohio State leads the Cincinnati Bearcats. Now Yates fires out to Bolden. A long jumper from outside, rolling in the rim. No good. Lucas took that defensive rebound right off the iron. Now Lucas on the post, turns around, shoots a jumper. He misses this one. And Thacker's there to get the bounce off the backboard for Cincinnati. Thacker leaves it out for Carl Bolden. 
Hogue playing with two fouls on him, one of them an offensive foul. Now he gets the ball. He curls in for an easy one. He banks it off the boards and through the court. Hogue oh, really winding through some crowded territory that time. Banged it in for his first two points of the game. It's 15 to 13. Ohio State leads Cincinnati by two. Now Lucas again gets the ball on the top of the circle, turns around and shoots it in again. And Paul Hogue just shakes his head. Lucas has 10 points already. 12.44 to go in the first half. Lucas has hit four out of six field goal tries. Cincinnati's basketball. Jerry is just going from the outside. Here's Weezen on. He fakes out Havlicek. He's got a layup under the boards, and there's a foul on the play. Or is, is it a foul? It's a charging foul, I suppose, on Wiesenhahn. Bob Wiesenhahn fouling, and that is foul number six against the Cincinnati team. Ohio State, the defending national champions, trying to become only the fourth team in history to ever win two national titles in a row. Richie Hoyt hits the free throw, and that gives him a total of three points. The Tony Yates in the offensive zone, Thacker, fakes a pass to Hogue. It has the ball knocked out of his hand by Larry Siegfried, and it's a backcourt violation, and Ed Jucker, the Ohio, the Cincinnati coach, is out on the floor. Boy, he's mad. He is really mad. He thought an Ohio State boy kicked it back there. Now we're ready to go. Lucas, a beautiful feed to Siegfried. He scores on the give and go. The old weak side guard around play. Siegfried with a beautiful bounce pass feed from Jerry Lucas fired it in. 20 to 13. The game is not quite 10 minutes old and Lucas has already done everything. Bowling for Cincinnati. Misses his shot. Hogue comes out of there with a rebound. He really went after that one with a vengeance. To Tony Yates. Inside to Hogue. He fires it back out to Bolden. Now to Thacker. A jumper from the close range is no good and it's having a check on the rebound for Ohio State. Here's Noel. He drives the left of the lane. He puts it on the boards. It's no good. Partially deflected by the big hand of Paul Hogue. And Bob Wiesenon gets it for Cincinnati to, to Bolin. Underneath the Thacker on the baseline, a turn jump shot, good. Tom Thacker has six points in the game. It's 20 to 15 with 11.06 to go in half number one. Our championship broadcast on WDAF Radio in Kansas City, Missouri. This is Monty Moore along with Mike Trips. For the Kansas City A's and WDAF Radio, Ohio State Siegfried shoots behind what looks to be a rolling screen set by John Hamlicek. Illegal screen, there's the sign. Boy, you've got to set those screens in a respectable distance of the defensive player. It's no good. This one rebounded by Richie Hoyt of the Buckeyes. Hoyt is a senior. So he bounces it back outside to Noel. He drives around his man. Back to Lucas. He turns around and takes too many steps. Lucas taking steps. Jerry Lucas never seems to change expression on the floor. Everything just seems to go well for him. He never has a grimace nor a grin. He just stays right in there and play. Here's Thacker for, old, for Cincinnati. Missing. Weezen on rebounds and scores and he's foul. Let's see if the basket counts. It does count. Bob Wiesenheim rooting out another one. They call him the Bear. The foul was on Richie Hoyt, his second. Bob Wiesenheim trying to make a three-pointer out of it. He fires and scores. Bob Wiesenheim will be in the East-West Shrine Air Red College All-Star Basketball Game Tuesday night here at the auditorium featuring the top 20 college seniors in basketball in America. This is this one. Lucas goes high to try to tip it in but misses. And Cincinnati's Carl Bolden comes out of there with it. Fires it to Tony Yates. He's going hard towards the basket. Puts it on the board and it's no good. There's a whistle-stopping play. Personal foul has been called. It's on Mel Noel of Ohio oh, State. His first. Oh, that Tony Yates has tremendous speed. Yates at the midcourt line. Yates took the outlet pass from Carl Bolin near the midcourt line and then started towards the circle. He changed his speed to high gear and went down through the middle. He gets two shots. He hits the first one. It's up, rolling on the rim. Down she goes. The ball game is all tied up at 20 to 20. Now Robert Knight, a six foot four inch junior from Marvel, Ohio, takes the place of Richie Hoyt. Now Siegfried with a long one. He rips the court with a two pointer. Larry Siegfried from about 20 to 25 feet out on the left side at an angle. Sends Ohio State into the lead. Now Tom Thacker has it for Cincinnati. He watches a play for him underneath. They get it to Tony Yates. Mel Knowles right there with him. That Knoll is really quick. Fine defensive player. To Hogue, he might duck it. He gets away from Lucas and scores. 
He didn't duck it, but he had in mind. If he could have stretched just a little more, he loves to dunk the ball. Paul Hogue has four points, and the score is all tied at 22 to 22. Ohio State's basketball. Mel Noel holds it high over his head, looking for the play to form. Sets it out in a man-to-man defense. Out to hell to check. There's a shot by a Johnny's no good. Lucas tries a tip, misses. Thacker rebounds. Cincinnati's fast break. Thacker in the middle with the ball. Holds up on the free throw line. Jump shot is no good. Wiesenon tries a tip and misses, and it goes back over to Thacker of Cincinnati. Out in the corner. This Cincinnati is tough on the backboards. Wiesenon with an outside shot. He scores. Cincinnati lead. Bob Wiesenon has seven points, and Ohio State takes the timeout. Score here is 24 to 22 Cincinnati, and Monty Cincinnati has outscored Ohio State 11 to 2 in the last three minutes. They've outscored the Buckeyes 11 to 2, trailing at one time 20 to 13. They now lead 24 to 22. Individual scoring right now. Tony Yates for Cincinnati has scored four. Carl Bolin has three. Paul Hogue has four. Tom Thacker six, and Bob Wiesenhahn has seven. They run a switching man-to-man, which could be called actually sort of a zone press. But Ohio State's two guards, Siegfried and Noel, take the ball into the offensive zone without much trouble. Jerry Lucas spots up deep alongside the free throw lane now. He turns over. Hogue is on him. There's a screen set for Robert Knight, who is in the game. He's in the corner. He's going to shoot right square out of the corner, and he misses. Noel gets rebound position, but Tony Yates gets it back, and it goes over to Packer of Cincinnati. Nice hustle by Tony Yates. He actually was out positioned by Mel Noel, but Yates out jumped him. Cincinnati leading by two, 24 to 22, with eight minutes to go in the first half. Rogue Wiesen on around him. Now Wiesen on takes the ball in the corner. He fakes, he shoots over, he scores. Bob Wiesen on already has nine points off the Ohio State defensive specialist, John Havlicek. It's 26 22, Cincinnati, as the nation's top two college basketball teams clash for the title. Here in Kansas City, this is the ninth time this tournament finals has been played at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City, Missouri. Now Siegfried with the ball outside. Cincinnati is a great defensive team. Both these teams play good defense. Both shoot well on offense. Noel drives the baseline. Yates doesn't go for the fake. They feed Lucas. He passes underneath intended for Knight, and it is intercepted by Packer of Cincinnati. Down the floor in a hurry. Carl Bolin arches in, and the Hogies close, and Lucas wraps him over the shoulder, committing the foul. doesn't foul off him, but when he does, it looks as though he gets his money's worth. He really wrapped Hogue with that one. Fires the free throw. He misses. He misses this one also, and Ohio State gets the rebound as Robert Knight comes out of there with it. Robert Knight with the ball to Gearhart, down along the side to Jerry Lucas. Outside, he sets a screen for Knight. Knight to the free throw circle. Holds up with Thacker all over him. Now to John Havlicek, who's been certainly stopped by Wiesen on. Everyone figured that Havlicek would be stopping Wiesen on, but it's been the other way around. Now, Ohio State looking for the good shot. They get it to Jerry Lucas. He shoots from the outside. He scores from the top of the circle. 12 points for Jerry Lucas. Most of them from the outside. It's 26-24. Six and a half minutes to play in the first half. Backer jockeys for position. He's got a shot on the baseline. Bangs high on the cup and won't go down. And Siegfried is in there to pull the ball off the defensive backboard for Ohio State. Down the floor in a hurry. Nobody picks him up. He feeds Lucas a 20-footer up. He hits again. Jerry Lucas with 14 points. Ties the game at 26-26. to 26. Cincinnati has it back. Boy, when in trouble, just beat All-American hot hands himself, Jerry Lucas. You expect centers to score in close, but Lucas has shown an amazing shooting ability from outside. Cincinnati's Tony Yates, they're overloading the right side. Bolin takes it to the top of the circle, squirts it in from the top. Beautiful shot. Five points for Carl Bolin, and Cincinnati leads 28 to 26. Now the Buckeyes' Larry Siegfried tries to bring it up against Tony Yates of Cincinnati, who really harasses him. This Cincinnati club has been running this pressing defense most of the year. Now it is Ohio State's Robert Knight along the left sideline looking for Lucas. Jerry came up, but they didn't get the ball to him. Now to Havlicek. And that Bulldog Wiesenhans right with him. What an individual battle they're going to have before the night's over. To Gary Gearhart. Underneath it goes to Knight along the baseline. He's looking for help. Holds the ball over his head. And Thacker, who has the longest pair of arms I've ever seen on a man his size, stretched him up. Here's Siegfried loose for a jumper from close range. He misses, and there goes Thacker after a rebound. Thacker is six feet three, and he went a good six to eight inches above the rim to pull that one off. He's getting a screen from Hogue. He drives the baseline. He horses it up and misses his shot, and it's knocked out of bounds. 
Jackson, our dad's a private detective in Cincinnati. Here's a pass to Thacker, a shot, rolling in the rim. It's not going to go down for him. Down the floor to Gearhart. A running jump shot. He hits a beauty. Gary Gearhart ties the game at 28 to 28. It's already been tied four times in the first half. 426 left to play in the half, and a great game like this, it just seems the time is flying by. Cincinnati's ball. Hogue sets a screen for Thacker. He shoots over it and misses, and the ball is going out of bounds. It'll be Ohio State's basketball. Paul Hogue, the Cincinnati center, must have jumped right out of his shoe that time. He's having to call timeout to tie it. The official is calling this timeout. Now it's back to play. Cincinnati's basket, or Ohio State's basketball. Cincinnati on defense to Havlicek. He takes a dribble, goes to his right. He pops it in from the right of the circle. Havlicek getting his first field goal. Sends Ohio State into a two-point, 30-28 to 28 lead with 3.51 to go in the first half. Here's Tony Yates getting a screen from Thacker. Defensive man is able to go around it. Arch it over to Bob Wiesenhahn. He's trying to put fake and drive around Havlicek. He's moving inside. Back to Thacker. Up he goes for a shot. It's on the way. It's no good. Rebounded by Wiesenhahn. He's got an easy one. 11 points in the first half for Bob Wiesenhahn, who came into the tournament averaging 17 points a ball game. And he's giving Havlicek all kinds of trouble under those backboards. Now Larry Sigford brings the ball up against Tony Yates. The game is tied at 30-30. to 30. The fifth time it's been tied in the first half. Gearhart to Lucas. He faked with a head fake around Hogue. Shot and missed. There's a foul on the play. Let's see if the basket counts. The basket counts. Call was made by Lucas. Let, oh, they're giving the basket to Lucas. They're calling defense goaltending. Goaltending call, so Lucas gets the basket. It's 32-30, Ohio State. They call the goaltending. Now Cincinnati's ball. Tony Yates tries to drive the baseline. He's around Gearhart. He feeds out to Wiesenhunt for a 10-footer, and Bob scores again. 13 points for Bob Wiesenhunt in the first half, and the game is tied, 32-32. Well, they're playing for all the marbles here at Kansas City Municipal Auditorium tonight. Into Lucas. He starts his foot fake and he takes too many steps. Jerry turning around, faking the drive. Paul Hogue has improved tremendously in one phase of his defensive game. Last year as a sophomore in the NCAA tournament, he would go for any head and shoulder fake and jump, but he hardly ever leaves the floor anymore, and it's helped him a lot. He's playing with two fouls outside to Yates. He shoots and scores from the top of the circle. Cincinnati leads 34 to 32. Yates has six points. Two minutes, 11 seconds to go. Near perfect basketball being played by these two teams. Siegfried to Gary Gearhart at the top of the center jump circle. Now down the corner to Robert Knight. Jerry Lucas comes up to the top of the free throw circle. There's a long one by Knight. It's not going to be good. And it is picked off the boards by Cincinnati's Tom Thacker. Cincinnati leads 34 to 32. Carl Bolden calls timeout for Cincinnati. It's their second timeout of the ballgame. Here at the auditorium Tuesday night, the 20 top senior college basketball players in American ball will be playing here, and your money will be going to a fine cause as we have a whistle back under the basket. We get started. We may have a foul. It's a foul on Robert Knight of Ohio State. Here's a free throw by Thacker. It's no good. Rebounded by Havlicek. Now as we move down the floor, Ohio State's basketball. Larry Siegfried to Gary Gearhart. Siegfried cuts through the middle. He gets a screen from Lucas. Shoots over the top of it. He can really drill him in. He scores from the top of the circle. Six points for Siegfried. 34 to 34. The game tied up again. It's Cincinnati's ball. Tom Thacker looking for Wiesenhahn, who ordinarily is coming behind a screen set up by Hogue. Hogue and Wiesenhahn work almost a double post offense. Underneath the Thacker, he's in scoring territory. He jacks it up and scores. Tom Thacker has eight points. This guy is very quick, a good jumper. It's Cincinnati 36 and Ohio State 34. 47 seconds ago in the first half of the National Championship basketball game for universities in America. Jerry Lucas working down alongside the free throw lane, goes out to the corner, holds the ball high over his head to Havlicek. Ohio State has won 31 games in a row coming into this ball game. Now Lucas has got it. 
Over to the corner tonight. Down underneath it goes to Siegfried. He fakes Tony Yates up into the air and shoots. Let's see. The ball went in. A miraculous shot. The basket counts. Tony Yates picked up the foul, and Siegfried will get the basket, which gives him eight points, and he'll try to make it nine on this free throw. He threw that ball down from an impossible position. And he hits the free throw. Nine points for Larry Siegfried. On the season, Siegfried's the third leading Ohio State scorer with 15 points a game. Now Paul Hogue has the ball. Outside it goes for a shot. No good. Lucas rebounds, and there's a foul. It's on Hogue of Cincinnati, his third. And the one and one is now in effect. Jerry Lucas goes to the line. He hits the free throw. He's at three out of three free throws. Here's Lucas shooting. He hits again. Here with five seconds left is Tony Yates shooting. One second. It's all over in the first half. The basket will count by Tony Yates. So at halftime, Ohio State leads by a score of 39. To 38. A fantastic game for the national championship. And fans will be back now to give you a rundown on the individual shooting percentages and scores in just one minute. But right now, Bill Grigsby speaks for the Kansas City Athletics. This is Monty Moore back at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City once again, where the National Collegiate Basketball Championships are being played, and the nation's two top teams, number one, Ohio State, number two, Cincinnati, are putting on a truly championship game. Ohio State leads 39-38 at halftime. Here's Mike Treps to tell you how it happened. Monty, you just don't find better basketball than we're seeing, and very quickly, here's the rundown of scoring. For Cincinnati, Bob Wiesenhahn is at 13 to lead. Uh, Tony Yates and uh, Tom Packer have had eight apiece. Carl Bolden has had five, and Paul Hogue has had four. High dotting did not score, neither did Tom Sizer. For Ohio State, Jerry Lucas already has scored 18 points. Larry Siegfried has nine. Melno, four. Richie Hoyt, John Havlicek, has three, has, they have three apiece. And uh, Gary Gerhardt has scored two. And that's the scoring from the percentages. We see that Cincinnati has hit 53% on 17 out of 32. Ohio State has hit 15 out of 26, 58%. And that's wonderful shooting. And it's four for four for Lucas at the line and seven out of 10 from the field for Lucas. One final question for you, uh, Eddie Diamond and Coach of St. Bonaventure during the year, in case you join us a little late. We're at halftime. Ohio State is leading Cincinnati 39-38 to for the national championship. Have you ever seen a better basketball player than Jerry Lucas? No, I haven't. We had the uh, the misfortune of playing him, and uh, he, uh, I, I think he moves like a guard. Uh, he's as strong a kid as I have ever seen. Uh, he can shoot well. Uh, he's the greatest basketball player that I have ever seen. Eddie, thanks very much for coming by. We look forward to seeing your team in action Tuesday night. Thank you very much, boy. Nice being here. Eddie Donovan, a wonderful man from... Up in New York, he coached the very fine St. Bonaventure Bonnies this year, one of the nation's top college teams. He'll coach the top college All-Stars on Tuesday night in the Air Red East West Prime game. So long, Eddie. And now fans moving in uh, is a great friend of mine and I think one of the finest uh, men, uh, analysts of basketball uh, in this part of the country, Bill Mayer, the managing editor of the Lawrence Daily Journal World. Bill, uh, you've seen some tremendous basketball games in the national finals right here. And uh, I know you always like to talk about the North Carolina-Kansas game, but just from a standpoint of a night of basketball excitement, have you ever been anywhere to have more excitement than right here tonight? Honey, I don't think I've ever seen two teams on a court more supremely confident of what they're doing than these two teams. Tonight. It's, it's phenomenal. You, you cannot ruffle them. I, I, uh, uh, the only uh, ruffle in the water that I've seen has been uh, Paul Hogue, the Cincinnati Center. He seems to be a little more temperamental than the other nine boys, and that oh, could mean the ball game there. because uh, he could let his emotions get away with him, and if he fouls out, why Cincinnati's chances, I think, will be severely hurt. But uh, nevertheless, this, it's just phenomenal the poise these teams have and the way they come down the court and the confident way they do it. And you can't make them take the shot until they want to take the shot. That's the thing that impresses me. Well, I'm so satisfied that it is a great game tonight and very few mistakes. The teams are shooting 58 and 53 percent respectively. Last night, actually, the semifinal round was sort of a helter-skelter affair. And I know a lot of people went out of here disappointed in seeing the top college basketball teams make so many mistakes. I think the thing that people don't realize, uh, Monty, is that when you play great teams like Ohio State and play great teams like Cincinnati, and, and I call Cincinnati a great team, I think they've been pitifully underrated. 
uh, going into this tournament. I think most people figured the Ohio State would win it. Uh, he hands down. Uh, we saw him up at Lawrence, and uh, they're a good basketball team. But when you get two great teams like this together, it's it's uh, it's hard to to crack their uh, uh, morale and it's hard to crack their poise. And uh, boy, it's a tremendous thing to see. Bill Birdie tosses the ball up. Ohio State gets the tip. The Buckeyes dressed in red going to the basket on our left as we look out along our WDAF microphone row. Here's Mel Noah with a long shot. No good. <laughs> Big Paul Hogue did the jackknife jump that time to pull it off the boards. The Bearcats have the basketball. Tom Thacker cross court to Bolden. Now to Tony Yates. Paul Hogue sits up in the top half of the circle setting a screen for Bolden. He goes through the defense. Now he goes down along the line to set one for Wiesen on. They couldn't get it to him. Here goes Yates through the middle. He misses. And... Jerry Lucas gets the rebound for Ohio State. Now Siegfried passes to Mel Noel at the top of the circle. 39 to 38. The ball game was tied eight different times in the first half. Now Noel outside with the ball. He slowed down their pace a little. Jerry Lucas looks on the weak side of the old guard around play, but his guard, John Alicek, breaking wasn't open. Now here goes Jerry down the baseline. He feeds Siegfried. He's wide open with 10, and he shoots and misses. And it's Lucas rebounding. He goes up for the shot and scores. Lucas fell into one that time that gave him a total of eight, 20 points in the game now. Ohio State 41 to 38. The lead seesaw at hands nine times in the first half. It was tied up eight times. Cincinnati's Carl Bolin gets a screen from Wiesenot. He takes a shot. He scores. Carl Bolin has seven points in the game. It's 41 to 40. Ohio State by one point. Now Larry Sickbridge starts jockeying to get the ball into the offensive end of the floor. Bolden picked him up there. He feeds Lucas in the high post. Jerry turns over. He hit plenty from there in the first half. Now he fires it down to Richie Hoyt. Outside to Havlicek. In the corner to Lucas. He shoots a jumper. He misses this one. And it goes out to Carl Bolden on a long rebound. Thacker spots up on the free throw line. He gets the ball. He shoots over the top of Hoyt. He misses his shot. Hogue rebounds for Cincinnati and takes steps. Trying to get out of there from crowded territory. And underneath, Siegfried, a big guard, feeds out to Richie Hoyt, and we're a three-second violation. We've got a three-second violation now against Ohio State. To Wiesenon, down in the corner to Tony Yates. He's looking for help. Back outside to Bob Wiesenon, who had 13 points in the first half. To Hoagie, hooks right, he scores a beauty. Oh, Hogue with six points. Got position right under the basket for his hook shot, and that's his big one. Now it's Mel Noel bringing it up for Ohio State. Cincinnati takes a 42-41 lead. Carl Bolin knocks the ball down on the backcourt and steals for Cincinnati. And now the Bearcats will set it up. Cincinnati made one offensive error in the whole first half. They've made one in the second half. Now Bolin to Tony Yates. You can't make many mistakes against Ohio State and beat them. Now here is Hogue, and he has the ball locked out of his hands by Siegfried. It was dropping back in. So it'll be Cincinnati's ball under the offensive bucket. Hogue spots up right under the board. They get it inside to Bolin. Fall away jumper out of the corner is no good. Scramble for that rebound is on. And it's Cincinnati's basketball again. The Bearcats lead their cross-state rivals. Ohio State, whom they have not played in athletic contests since 1922 by a score of 42-41. Here's Wiesen on shooting on the boards. He misses. It goes out to Mel Noel of Ohio State. And he has to hold up weight on his teammates. Now he goes to the left of the free throw lane. Outside to Richie Hoyt and the redhead. Fires in the corner to Noel. He shoots one up. It looks good from here, but it's over. And is Cincinnati's basketball. Tom Packer's got it. 16 minutes to play. Both teams in man-to-man -man defenses. Here's Bolin with a running jumper. Swish, he hits. Carl Bolin now has nine points. And Cincinnati leads 44-41. to Ohio State led 39-38 at halftime. Now Mel Noel's having a hard time getting that ball into the offensive zone, but he finally does. Now down the floor to Richie Hoyt. Hoyt looks at the bucket, decides not to shoot. Ohio State had a hard time getting to the national tournament, believe it or not. They just defeated Louisville 56-55 in a first-round regional game. Out in Louisville, Kentucky. Havlicek outside of Siegfried. Tony Yates goes out after him. Big Paul Hogue is on... Uh, Jerry Lucas and Thacker is dropping back in there to help out on Lucas from the weak side forward post. Richie Hoyt wide open over the corner. They get it to him. He shoots. He scores. Five points for Hoyt. And that, of course, is one of the weaknesses of a weak side forward dropping back to help out on a big postman. You leave someone open when you do that. And Hoyt was able to capitalize on the fine pass. 
It's 43 to 44. Cincinnati by one, and the Bearcats have the basketball. Hogue starts to set up as a screener. He gets it to Bolden outside of Jumper. He hits again. 11 points for Carl Bolden, who picked up three personal fouls in the first four minutes of the ball game. He and Hogue each has three. It's 46 to 43. Lucas now goes to work. He fires along the baseline to Siegfried, then breaks underneath. Havlicek shooting outside. It's no good. We've got a whistle. There's a foul under the boards. It's on Jerry Lucas of Ohio State. Big Paul Hogan, the free throw line for Cincinnati. The Knoxville, Tennessee native fires and scores a bullseye. He has hit seven points tonight. He's averaging 17 per game on the season. At a jam-packed municipal auditorium in Kansas City, Siegfried shoots from outside and he counts one. Larry Siegfried has 11 points. 47 to 45. Cincinnati's basketball to Carl Bolden, the top of the circle. Siegfried's been dropping off of him a little bit, and Bolden has been able to hit his last two field goal tries. Mel Noel deflects the ball out of Tony Yates' hands, but Tony got it back. Now outside to the cool operating senior backcourt man for Cincinnati, Bolden. They get it into Thacker. Thacker working on Richie Hoyt for the fallaway jumper. He misses, and it's Lucas on the rebound for Ohio State. He almost threw the ball away. Mel Noel had to come back to the midcourt line to save it. 13.43 left to play in the national championship game. Havlicek over to Larry Siegfried. Siegfried guns one from long range and misses. There's some contact under the backboards. The foul is on Cincinnati. Foul on Yates, number 20, Tony Yates, Cincinnati. his second foul. Noel has four points tonight. One field goal, two free throws. He fires the one-hander. He finds the range and drops it in. Carl Bolden for the Bearcats. To Yates, down in the corner to Wiesenon. He drives through the middle. He holds up, feeds Bolin. He's open in his favorite spot. He hits from the top of the circle. 13 points for Bolin and a three-point, 49 to 46 lead for Cincinnati. This is for all the marbles, the big loving cup. And the lovable loving cup means the national college championship. The two Ohio schools, the first time that two teams from one state have ever been in the national finals. Here's Havlicek partially blocked by... Thacker of Cincinnati. That Thacker can really get up into the air. Cincinnati has the ball again. 12-51 left to play in the game. We saw a full overtime game in the preliminary tonight for third place. St. Joseph's of Philadelphia beat the University of Utah 127 to 120. Bolin is spotted up right around the top of the free throw circle. Man-to-man defense. Nobody making many penetrations. Here's Bolin shooting outside. He scores again. Bolden has five field goals in the second half, and only one other Bearcat has hit from the field in the second half. It's 51-46, the biggest lead of the game. It's Cincinnati's favor. Ohio State in a jam now with 12 minutes to play. Point underneath to Lucas. He takes his first shot of the second half. He misses it, and it's Wiesen on ripping that ball off the backboard. Really cheering him on. Here's Siegfried stealing on the front side, but he commits the personal foul. Larry Siegfried fouling for Ohio State. That's his second foul. And Bolin had 21 points last night. He scored. It's 52 to 46. They haven't had much success with Lucas in the second half. He scored 18 in the first half. Now here's Hoyt. He hits from the top of the circle with a jumper. Richie Hoyt with seven points in the game now. It's 52-48. Cincinnati's basketball. Tony Yates calls for Hogue to come up high on the top of the circle. He uses a screen, a loose one. He fires and misses, and Jerry Lucas is there. He arches it down the floor to Mel Noel. Noel cannot go all the way as Tony Yates gets back, but Noel shoots outside. Bingo, he hits. Mel Noel scores for Ohio State. And it's 52 to 50. The Buckeyes are trailing by two. An Ohio Civil War played at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. Timeout call for Cincinnati. Their third timeout of the ballgame. With timeout, 10.54 to go. The score, Cincinnati 52, Ohio State 50. Here's Mike Tripps. Bonnie, both these teams continue to shoot very, very well. Ohio State shooting 56%, just four under the percentage they shot in the first half. While the University of Cincinnati has put the ball up there 47 times, they've connected 23 of those occasions for 49%. So you can see the shooting is, is just about perfect. This Carl Bolden has done a tremendous job, Bob. Uh, 
He's just at five of six, we've been informed in this second half to go along with the five points he scored in the first half. You know, a lot of people thought that the best playmaker out here would be Larry Siegfried. Siegfried mentioned prominently on a lot of All-American teams. But, Monty, I think you'll agree that this Bolden has overshadowed Siegfried tonight, as has Wiesenhahn over Havlicek. Now, everybody knew that Jerry Lucas would get his share and do a tremendous job everywhere. But, boy, when you have uh, a battle between Havlicek and Wiesenhahn and Bolden and Siegfried, there could be your ball game. And right now, I'd say Cincinnati has won that uh, fight between those two, even though we still have 10 minutes and 54 seconds to go before this game is history. All right, back to play Cincinnati's ball. Pogue hooking off the post right on the baseline, and he misses badly. Jerry Lucas is there to let the rebound fall into his hand. He didn't have to go after that one. It came to him. Well, Jerry Lucas is spotted up up there, mainly for a screener and faster at this particular phase of the game. Now Havlicek comes to the near sideline. To Larry Siegfried, Carl Bolin standing right in front of him. Cincinnati leads by two, 52 to 50. They have had a six-point lead at one time. Now Noel, foot faking, driving. Yates checks him off. They feed Havlicek on the left side. He fires and misses. It's tipped in by Larry Siegfried. And the ball game is tied for the ninth time tonight. Tied at 52 to 52. And it's Cincinnati's basketball. Noel putting pressure on Yates. They hit Thacker. Thacker was hot in the first half. Now Thacker goes to the baseline. Richie Hoyt's all over him. Doe's on. He curls his way in there under the boards, and he's a tied up. Tied up by Havlicek of Ohio State. Havlicek's been so busy trying to stop Wiesenhahn, he hasn't had much time to score. He's had only three points. Wiesenhahn out jumps him that time, and the tip, however, does go to Ohio State. As Wiesenhahn continues to amaze the basketball coach he's looking on. He looks as though he might be a big football guard of some kind. But he's got great spring in his leg, and what's more, he has about as strong a fighting heart as I've ever seen in any athlete I can recall. He's a great player. Jerry Lucas takes the ball. The guards did not split the post that time. They just faked the split and drove right straight down the lane. Now Noel is underneath for reverse layup. He scores an impossible shot nearly. Well, Noel came from nowhere to score that one. Nine points for him, and Ohio State takes the lead as they've scored eight straight points. It's 54 to 52. Tony Yates dribbling away. He fakes a shot, feeds Thacker in the give and go. It's knocked out of bounds by the ever-present Mel Noel. This is Monty Moore bringing you NCAA Championship Basketball. Glad to have you along. Our broadcast sponsor for the Kansas City Athletics and WDAF Radio. Ohio State's Noel underneath to Jerry Lucas, and there's a foul. Tony Yates under Lucas. The Buckeyes of Ohio State many times when they have the fast break going will have Lucas go down the middle of the floor and get to the basket as quickly as he can. Then they'll arch the ball up toward the rim and just let Lucas funnel it in, a la Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Here's the shot by Lucas again. He hits. Now Ohio State putting on a full court defensive press and we have a whistle stopping play. We've got a foul near the midcourt line. It's on Richie Hoyt of Ohio State, putting on too aggressive a press. Now here's Packer shooting, and he hits the free throw. He's got nine points in the game. That was Hoyt's third personal foul, by the way. It's 56-53. Ohio State is now in the lead by three points. Siegfried is six feet four and a very rugged backcourt man. This Ohio State team, a great one, with Cincinnati also a fine basketball team. Better than fine. The nation's number two ranked team with 21 straight wins before tonight. Ohio State with 32 before tonight. Here's Lucas. He fakes. He drives. He's got a layup. He's got a basket. Lucas faking around Paul Hogue, who has to play actually a very loose defense now because he has three fouls on him. It's 58-53. Ohio State by five now. Cincinnati jumped into a six-point lead early in this half. Here is Wiesenhahn shooting out of the corner. It's in and out. No good. Lucas controls the backboard for Ohio State. Here is Lucas with a long jumper. It's no good. And Thacker up for the rebound. Loses it out of bounds. It's Ohio State's ball. Jerry Lucas will toss it in. Lucas in the middle. No, he tries to drive the baseline. Bolden protects well. Now he holds up, shoots a jumper. It's on the rim. It's no good. And it's Wiesenhahn and Thacker both in there. Thacker comes out dribbling the ball for Cincinnati. Thacker looks for Yates. He gives it to him. Now Yates signaling for the offensive team to set up something. They feed Hogue on the post. He jockeys around for a fallaway jump shot. It was going to be a shot. He had to pass. He fed Thacker and he fired and missed. Hogue tips and misses. Goes after it again. It goes back out to Yates of Cincinnati. Under to Thacker. He's wide open. He scores. 
from Tony Yates and Thacker now is hit for 11 it's 58 to 55 with 642 left to play Cincinnati trails they led by six once in the second half Ohio State led at halftime 39 to 38 Jerry Lucas with the ball on the top of the circle the Larry Siegfried off on the right side Siegfried feeds down to Richie Hoyt Thacker goes after him stretches those long arms out now the Buckeyes move outside. They're looking for their good shot. Mel Noel takes it, a long one. It's not good, and Bolden gets the rebound for Cincinnati. Actually, only two other players have scored for Cincinnati in the second half. Now Wiesenhardt's got it. He tries to drive the baseline. Hamlet checks on him now. He's done quite a job. Wiesenhardt has not scored in the second half. He had 13 at halftime. So maybe Havlicek has his number. Here's Bolden driving around Siegfried. He heads for the baseline. Arches it back outside to Tony Yates. Yates driving. He's through the middle. He throws it on the boards and misses. And it is going to be tipped back in. Fine hustle by Tony Yates. It goes to Paul Hogue of Cincinnati. Boy, this Yates is a player. Ten great players on the floor right now. Here's a jumper by Thacker. It's on the rim. Off. No good. Hogue rebound. Tries a reverse layup. Misses. Scramble for the board. Ball is controlled by Havlicek of Ohio State. Down the right sideline to Siegfried. He looked for Lucas. Lucas spots up deep under the basket now. Ohio State 58. They get it to Jerry Lucas. And he curls around Hope. And there's a charging foul on Jerry Lucas. We'll be bringing you Major League Baseball with the Kansas City A's beginning Monday at 12.25. Merle Harmon and Bill Grigsby are in the land of the sunshine right now with the A's. And they'll start against the Yankees Monday. Hope misses his free throw. Here's a whistle and a foul is on Wiesenhardt of Cincinnati. He got in that lane soon and committed a foul shoving. That's his second foul of the ball game. Jerry Lucas hitting the free throw. Ohio State leads by four. Five, ten left to play. Here's Yates, drives the baseline. He puts it on the board through the courts for two. A pretty play by Tony Yates. Ten points for Yates. It's 59-57. Ohio State's lead now is only two points. Mel Noel gets it across the timeline. Lucas again is playing in the high half of the circle. Richie Hoyt with the ball. Thacker's on him. The switch is now on with Yates covering Hoyt. They feed Lucas and break by him, headed for the baseline. He doesn't pass to anyone deep. He goes back outside to Siegfried. Siegfried to Mel Noel, and the junior guard begins to go to work with uh, Larry Siegfried. Now to Hatchek. Off to Richie Hoyt. Hoyt goes down to the baseline, and Cincinnati will switch at the least provocation of a screen on defense. They go man to man, but it's a loose one. Here's Noel driving, shooting. He is having a shot blocked by Tom Thacker. What a game this Thacker's playing. He's now Cincinnati could tie the score. Here's Bolin shooting. He's going to miss this one. And it's rebounded by Wiesenhardt. A final shot is good. The game is tied. 59-59. This is the tenth time the ball game has been tied. The first tie was at 20 to 20. Ohio State led up until that time. Now Jerry Lucas with the ball. Three minutes, 49 seconds left to play in the championship ball game. Every play, every move on the floor could mean a national championship now. We're in the critical stages. Ohio State against Cincinnati. As we like to call it, the Civil War of Ohio played in Missouri. Siegfried shoots the long one, misses, but there's Lucas to get it. He feeds back out to Havlicek. Now the Buckeyes will set up their offense again. Bolden moves after Larry Siegfried, who's about 25 feet away from the bucket on the left side. Now he's outside, dribbling the ball in the midcourt line. 3.22 left to play. A tied up 59-59 national championship game. The last time the championships were held here, we had an overtime, a triple overtime for the national title. We had a four-overtime game for third place here tonight. We may see another game with a tie, but it's a long ways off, actually, in basketball terminology. Three minutes, five seconds, traveling on Siegfried of Ohio State. The Buckeyes had the ball for 42 seconds and did not shoot. And now Ohio State calls for their second timeout of the ball game. With timeout on the floor, 2.58 left to play in the championship game. It's Ohio State 59, Cincinnati 59. Here's Mike. Shooting percentages, as far as this game is concerned, both teams have showed why they're the number one and two teams in the nation, because their shooting has been simply fantastic. Ohio State has now hit 23 out of 45, which is still over 50%. Cincinnati has...
has hit 26 of 58, which is just under 50%. Monty, the uh, Buckeyes with a 59 to 54 lead. The score is now 59 all. Cincinnati has the ball with two minutes and 58 seconds to go. Now, I don't know what they'll do. They have the height to combat Ohio State on the boards, so perhaps they'll go ahead and shoot. It appears that two minutes and 58 seconds might be too long a time to try to stall it out for one shot. But it appears now that uh, any error, no matter how slight, could pay off, or I should say it could pay off at the other club, and uh, might cost a national championship because the game, as you said, is in the critical stages, and there is no margin for error now. This has been Carl Bolden against Ohio State in the second half. Regardless of what happens the rest of the way, this little guy has made my all-tournament team. Now Bolden operating. They're using Thacker, Wiesenhahn, and Hogue along the front line with Hogue, the hub man, and the screener for Thacker and Wiesenhahn to come around to meet the ball. It's tied up 59 to 59. 230 left to play in the ball game. Now Carl Bolin being a little bit nonchalant with the ball. Over to Tony Yates, he starts a drive, but Mel Noel is right there with him. The footwork on this Noel is really something to watch. It reminds one of a great boxer. Here's Thacker shooting, he scores Cincinnati lead. Thacker has 13 points at 61-59, Cincinnati over Ohio State. Two minutes to play. Larry Siegfried brings the ball across the timeline to Mel Noel. And now Jerry Lucas is a little bit deeper spotting up offensively for Ohio State. Lucas in the second half of this ball game has hit only seven points. He had 18 in the first half. 25 for the game though, that's not bad. A minute 50 to go. Ohio State's Robert Knight with the ball. Thacker's on him. To Noel, back to Knight. He drives the baseline. He's headed for the bucket. A reverse layup. He scores a beauty. Robert Knight got in for an easy one. That's his first field goal, and it's tied up at 61 to 61. That's the 11th time this game has been tied up tonight. Now Boland for Cincinnati has it. A minute and 30 seconds left to play. Cincinnati has two more timeouts if they want them, and Ohio State has three more if they need them. So neither team is in trouble that way. A minute, 20 seconds to go. Cincinnati's Tony Yates with the basketball. He's looking for help as Noel is all over him. And it's Bob Wiesenon who comes outside. Wiesenon, who's been the leader for this ball club, the leading scorer and the second leading rebounder, is also quite a playmaker. Yates with a changeover dribble, moves in close. He feeds Hogue, and Hogue goes back outside to Wiesenon. Exactly a minute to play in the game. It's all tied up 61 to 61. Ohio State just barely beat Louisville in the Mideast Regionals. 56-55 on a last second shot by Havlicek. And now here they are right down on the stretch again. Cincinnati's Wiesenon comes outside. Ohio State cannot afford to make a foul here either because, well, the one and one is not in effect against them. As a matter of fact, it's not in effect against either team. But the way these teams have been shooting fouls, neither team has missed in the second half from the foul line. Cincinnati's hit three in a row and Ohio State four. That's how little fouling there's been in this game. It's just been a tremendously well-played game. Cincinnati ticking off the clock. 24 seconds to go now. It's tied up 61 to 61. Who will get that last shot if they keep it that long? It's Thacker. The pressure is moving in on him now. He's dribbling. He's got to start moving towards the basket within five seconds in the area in which he's in outside. Now Tony Yates, 10 seconds. They're spotting up down along the baseline. Seven seconds. Yates faking. He gets it to Thacker. He lets her go. He misses and Lucas rebounds and calls timeout with two seconds on the clock. Tom Thacker took the shot. He had to work hard to get it off, but a kid who can jump that high got off what is probably called his best percentage shot. He just was way short with it. And Jerry Lucas was there to rebound. And now let's see if Ohio State can get the ball up the floor. Now remember this, fans. Under the present rules of basketball, Ohio State, since they call timeout in the backcourt at their defensive end of the floor, must get that basketball out of bounds under the defensive basket. The clock does not start running until the ball hits an offensive player's hand inbounds. So if Jerry Lucas could spot up under the basket, and if, since, if Ohio State could throw that ball in the air to Lucas down under the bucket, the clock wouldn't start until he got it. But Paul Hogue will be playing fairly close in there too with six feet nine inches of height and great legs to jump with. So it's going to be interesting to see what Fred Taylor, also a young basketball coach, is trying to cook up for the last two seconds of the game. Cincinnati had its chance and missed when Tom Thacker missed his shot. But Ohio State will have one. Mike Treps, I can't recall ever going anywhere for a night of entertainment and being entertained more royally than here tonight. Marty, it's been a spectacular, that's all you can say. 
Two seconds to go. When Tom Thacker took his shot, he was a little bit off balance, but he was shooting his favorite shot to the right, that jump shot. It was a little short, and Jerry Lucas seemed to be calling timeout while still in the air going up for the rebound. That's how fast he was thinking. Back to play, two seconds, maybe in overtime. We'll see now. Here's what Ohio State has. They have another timeout coming if they want it. If they could get that ball to someone at midcourt in the offensive zone, they could still call another timeout for a last-second shot. Cincinnati's pressing them all over. They're arching it the length of the floor. That's what Ohio State's doing. They got it to Havlicek in the offensive zone, and they've got one second left. A fine play. We just mentioned to you they had another timeout. And they do. They still have a timeout left. But they won't have to take another one because there's only one second left. And now they've got to figure out what to do. That took only one second. We mentioned the clock does not start running until the ball hits an offensive player's hands inbound. So they threw it to Havlicek at the offensive end of the floor for Ohio State. And now they'll have the ball out of bounds in front of their own bench, close to their own basket. Well, Mike Trapp, do you care to venture a guess as to whom they'll try to throw that ball next? My, uh, they'll try to throw that ball to Lucas under the basket. And keep in mind that Paul, Paul Holt can't afford to come near him because the clock does not start, as you mentioned, until the ball hits somebody's hand. Therefore, Paul Hogue has got to stay away from Lucas until the ball hits his hand. And when it does hit Lucas's hand, then he's really got to start worrying. Because one second is enough to shoot. Cincinnati must play outstanding defense, close defense. But they can't afford to play too closely because the foul would be deadly. Monty, do you think they might do as they did last night where they'll try to hit that backboard and have Jerry tip it in from there? If the ball hits the backboard, the ball it is in play. play. Lucas still would have that one second to tip. Well, we won't have to wait long now. Lucas is not getting back under the basket. He's spotting up in the top half of the circle. Mel Moore and Larry Siegfried, the two guards, are under the basket. Havlicek will throw it in with one second to go in the national championship final. All right, here we go. We're going to arch it over under the bucket. It goes to Lucas. It hits the rim. The clock is stopped. He didn't get a chance to shoot it. Havlicek tried to arch that ball to Lucas. He actually spotted up in the top half of the circle, but he got a screen from Mel Newell and tried to peel off and go down under the bucket. So now we'll go on to the second overtime game of the night out of two played here at Municipal Auditorium. For Ohio University, they've hit 26 out of 60 for 43 percent. And... Oh, check that. That's Cincinnati, 43%, and Ohio State is at 52%. We'll have a five-minute overtime. During the regulation game, it was all tied up 11 different times. At 20 to 20, 22, 22, 26 all, 28 all, 30 all, 32, 34, 36, 52, 59, and 61. All right, we're ready to go now. Cincinnati, Paul Hogue jumping center, and Cincinnati gets the tip into the last five minutes, maybe. The first overtime of the championship game. It was 39-38 at halftime. It's 61-61, to end of the regulation period. Ohio State led by one at halftime. Each team has enjoyed no more than a six-point lead at any time in the game, and each team has had at least that lead once. 439 left to play. Cincinnati looking for the good shot. Bolin using a head fake. Goes down to the baseline. But Larry Siegfried is in there. Hogue is in close for a shot. He is fouled by Lucas, his fourth. defense let Paul Hogue get him on his hip and get the ball and when Hogue got position he started in there Hogue has hit only 53 percent of his free throws this year he fires it up and he hits this one takes a lot of time the big guy shoots bullseye he scores again Cincinnati 63 Ohio State 61 each team had a chance at that last winning shot now to Siegfried outside again. Robert Knight goes to the far corner. Siegfried shoots. It's partially blocked. And there's a foul on Wiesen out of Cincinnati. He went up over the back of Robert Knight. That on Wiesen on is foul number three. Oh, got two fouls in the first four minutes of the game. And has had only one since. He's played the whole last half without a foul. Oh, guess. Here is Knight's free throw. He hits. So Knight now has three points. And the score is 63-62 with four minutes to play. Cincinnati has the ball and a one-point lead. They get it inside to Hogue. Lucas is right on him defensively. Lucas has got four fouls. Up goes Hogue. He missed a layup. Wiesen on rebounds. He follows. He hits. He scores. Wiesen on took the ball away from Jerry Lucas. He's playing very cautiously on defense because of his four fouls. 
A three-point lead for Cincinnati as Wiesenon hustled that offensive backboard where the rebounds really pay off. 65-62 with 3.36 left to play in the first overtime. It may be the only overtime of this game unless Ohio State's able to come from behind. 3.28 left to play. They feed Lucas. He turns over to Havlicek outside to Larry Siegfried. Lucas sets a screen for Siegfried. Over to Havlicek. Havlicek and Lucas have not done very much scoring in the second half for Ohio State. Now they clear the right side of the floor for Lucas. He goes to the corner. He gets the pass. Now he's in there deep. But an intended pass for him is deflected out of bounds by Carl Bolden. Ohio State has never been a team that's really played towards Lucas. They bounce it into him now, and he shoots it off the boards and through the cards for two. A quick out-of-bounds pass from Havlicek to Lucas, and he shot in a close one at 65-64, 2.50 left to play. Cincinnati has the ball in a one-point lead. Each team can have an additional timeout during an overtime. Keep that in mind in case the coaches want to talk to them, in case the team gets in trouble. In the game, Cincinnati's had only three timeouts. Here's Hoag starting to drive on Lucas. Lucas has to play real loose defense now because he has only four fouls. He has four fouls, only one left. Cincinnati with a one-point lead protecting that basketball. Here's Yates going on the drive. Feeds in the corner to Carl Bolden. Siegfried goes after him. Hoag moves out of the free-throw lane now and alongside the free-throw lane. Backer using him for a pivot. Goes driving around him. Now Bolden outside operating with the ball on the dribble. Two minutes to go in the ball game. It's 65 to 64. Cincinnati with a one-point lead. Thacker outside with the ball. Here comes Robert Knight after him. Cincinnati's Thacker starts his dribble, and he can really dribble. He was the delay game for Cincinnati against Kansas State. Cincinnati wants a timeout. That's only their fourth timeout of the ball game. Cincinnati with a minute 55 seconds to go and a one-point lead. Let's see if they try to stall it out or whether they'll go ahead and take the good shot. The complexion of this ball game changes immensely with Jerry Lucas playing with four fouls because he just cannot afford to go in there after Paul Hoag. And six foot nine, if they can get that ball to him at an advantage, he's going to get two. No, Havlicek is still on uh, someone else. Here goes Bolden. He feeds Wiesen on underneath. He misses a layup and Lucas gets the rebound with a minute 46 to go. So Ohio State went for the shot. Wiesenon missed it, uh, or Cincinnati did, and now Ohio State's got the basketball. Under to Lucas, on the post. He turns over. Hogue is on him. And I have to go. Ohio State behind by one point. They're looking for a good shot, too. They can't afford to take a bad one here. Now Siegfried looks for Lucas. Lucas is spotted up very close behind the bucket. They arch it up to him, and it's a bad pass. Wiesenon intercepts for Cincinnati. Ohio State in a full court press now. A minute, 13 seconds to go. Tony Yates starting his drive. Ohio State in a swarming defense, a pressing defense. And there's a foul call on Gearhart of Ohio State. The theory for the Buckeyes now seems to be to play a reckless defense and press the point of the ball. The minute a man starts to dribble, two and sometimes three men will go after him, hoping that he'll make a bad pass or travel. Tony Yates on the free throw line for Cincinnati. He's at 10 points. He fires. This is a big one. He scores it. It's 66. Just 64 with a minute to go. In the overtime, Ohio State trails by two. They're the national champions defending. They won last year, defeating California by 20 points in the final game. Siegfried shooting. It's on the way up. It's no good, but he's fouled by Bolden. Siegfried is the leading free throw shooter on the Ohio State team, hitting 87%. He's hit 116 out of 133, and he's got two shots coming. He could tie this game. The first one up, in and out, no good. That's the first free throw either team has missed in the second half of the game. And now here's the next one. It's also good. Uh, it is good. 66-65 with 42 seconds left to play in overtime. It's they're arching that ball back and forth like center fielders in baseball. 34 seconds. They're in their delay game. Over to Tony Yates. Cincinnati on offense. Ohio State on defense. And we have a whistle-stopping play. We've got a foul. It's against Ohio State. John Havlicek. Havlicek's second personal foul. The one-and-one one goes into effect as of right now. So now the free throws really become important. If Tony Yates, who will be shooting, hits his first, he'll get a bonus. Up she goes. He hits. It's 67 to 65. Ohio State by two. Or Cincinnati by two over Ohio State. 28 seconds left. Good again by Tony Yates. Cincinnati leads by three with 26 seconds to go. 
Now here is Jerry Lucas with a turnaround jumper. He choked on that one, missed it a mile. It's saved, however, by Gearhart, stolen by Bolden. Down the floor to Yates, he's all alone. He misses the layup, and the ball goes out of bounds. It's Ohio State's ball with 11 seconds. They trail by three. Now we've got a jump ball as Tony Yates goes streaking in there to tie up Larry Siegfried. Eight seconds remaining. Ohio State's got it, I think. I think they have finally been beaten. Thacker is having to tie his shoes. They have stopped the clock. Cincinnati may put on the greatest exhibition of Jubilation T. Corn Pone Auditorium's ever seen if they are able to pull this one out. It isn't over yet. Eight seconds to go. Cincinnati leads by three points. And it could very well have been five. Now Cincinnati wants to take a timeout. This is their fifth timeout of the game. We've seen stranger things happen. But I don't think that Cincinnati, I imagine what Ed Jucker's telling right now, is that if Ohio State gets the ball, let them go down and have their field goal, and just don't foul them. Paul Hogue is dropping back in the center on defense. Ohio State's Siegfried will jump with Tony Yates. Now they toss it up. It goes to Cincinnati. Thacker shoots. He hits the buzzer. Thacker hits again. 70 to 65. Now Cincinnati still shooting. They steal the ball again. It's all over. And there's the greatest celebration you've ever seen on the floor right here. Cincinnati wins it in overtime, 70 to 65, and the public address announcer is saying something that I'm sure is falling on mighty deaf ears. He said, stay off the floor with your shoes on. Cincinnati wins it in overtime, 70 to 65, over a very dejected Ohio State Buckeye team. The national champions are lifting their coach Ed Jucker up on their shoulders. Boy, I'll tell you, he's happy. He's shouting with his fist clenched and pointing it to the sky. He's getting a ride. He is overwhelmed with joy, and you can't blame him. Well, it's been a great game. And while the celebration is going on on the floor, we'll throw it back to Signal Hill for a 60-second message from Bill Grigsby for the Kansas City A's. Auditorium. This is Marty Moore with Mike Trepps. The Ohio State Buckeyes are being called out into the center of the floor and they're getting a great ovation from their fans. And well, they should. Whichever team lost this ball game tonight certainly had nothing to be ashamed of because this was a great basketball game. Tied up 11 different times. It was first tied at 20, then at 22, then it was tied at 26, at 28, at 30. It was tied at 32, at 34, at 36. It was tied again at 52. It was tied at 59, and the regulation game ended tied 61 to 61. But Cincinnati led throughout most of the first overtime game. So, here's the final score. Cincinnati 70, Ohio State 65. The Buckeyes have their 32-game winning streak snap. They do not defend their national championship, but the state of Ohio still has a national champion. The thunderous ovation for the champions, the Cincinnati Bearcats, and what a great honor to go to a coach in his very first year of coaching. Mike Ed Jucker takes over a team that's lost, Oscar Robertson and Ralph Davis, both of whom have made professional basketball teams in their first year, and both of whom are stars on pro basketball teams. They lost these men, and he came back, set up a completely new offense, and won the national championship. Oh, this is the thing. I, I kind of feel sorry for George Smith. For three straight years, he took Cincinnati to the uh, regional and then to the national tournament. And he, he hustled. He had a tremendous ball club, but he could never make it. So he turns it over to his assistant, who wins the national championship in his first year. A tremendous job. And, and we say again, don't take anything away from the Buckeyes for losing. But certainly don't take anything away from Cincinnati for winning. Tremendous basketball. And even though last night's games just uh, weren't a championship caliber, you can't say anything about tonight. We saw five overtime tonight, Monty. And that's almost three full games. And our listeners got it all for the price of one. Compliments to Kansas City Athletics and WDAF Radio. Well,